Good morning. It's Thursday, August 1st, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled Circle of Life, and our scripture is Romans chapter 11. Oh, how great are God's riches in wisdom and knowledge! How impossible it is for us to understand His decisions and His ways. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to give Him advice? And who has given Him so much that He needs to pay it back? For everything comes from Him and exists by His power and is intended for His glory. All glory to Him forever. Amen. With all due humility and respect to the popularity of Walt Disney, Tim Rice, and Elton John's Circle of Life song in the movie Lion King, what they give us is merely wisdom from the underside of things here on earth. They don't begin to scratch the surface of the circle's source. The real circle of life begins and comes round to heaven. The Apostle Paul rarely stuttered like Moses. When the little ugly student of Gamaliel, Paul may have been a slow learner, but he turned out to be quite a scholar, when he wrote his letter to the Roman Christians, his small, twisted stature, poor eyesight, and thorny side faded into the background as he gave us an eternal glimpse into our beginning and ending. Bowing to the omniscient wisdom of Yahweh, creator of all, the apostle unfolds the simplest but most profound truth about the circle of life. It begins with God, it continues to exist because of God's will and power, and does not simply repeat until it destroys itself, but returns unto God, bringing glory, honor, and unending praise to its maker. That's quite a circle. In the movie, the little lion cub, Simba, is destined to be the king after his father, Mufasa, passes from the scene. Dad teaches the young prince that while they chase the gazelle and eat them, eventually lions also die, return to the soil, become the grass which the gazelle eat. That is Mufasa's circle of life. Sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. But God has a much higher plan than live, deteriorate, die, rot in the ground to become fertilizer for the savanna grass and be reborn as a well-fed antelope, only to be eaten by the next generation of lions. Now, with that existential philosophy, even less appealing than Akuna Matata, you got nothing more to look forward to than the African proverb that whimpers, Every morning, a gazelle awakens to the reality that he must outrun the fastest lion or be eaten today, while every lion awakens to the reality that he must outrun the slowest gazelle or starve today. Either way, the dawn brings running. And that's the whole difference between philosophy and theology. With man's philosophizing circle, all you get is running and someday being outrun and eaten. When it's theology, God's thought, it's about living. We're created by Him, and we live for and in His good and glory, and eventually we go to Him, the giver, sustainer, and purpose of all life. That's a circle you can live with. For you today, you were created with a higher purpose than retirement to become gazelle food. With a Creator and Savior like that, what's not to love? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.